Hello and welcome back to another full step by step PC build guide and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC in the latest case from Sumpt. This is the shuttle so if you are looking for a PC case that looks good sitting on the left hand side of the desk, Sumpt may well have you covered with this one. If you see any parts you like you'll find links to all the parts I've used in the description so let's make a start by taking a detailed look at the case. So you can see why I said their case is going to look great sitting on the left hand side of our desk. We've got timber glass on our front and our right side panel which means when you're looking in from here you're going to get a great look at your build. To remove our tempered glass side panel, we can get our hands in here at the back, pull the panel outwards, and then we can lift the panel up and away. And our front panel can simply be pulled off from the top. If we take a look at our other side panel, you'll notice we've got two large areas of perforation. This one down the bottom is for our power supplies intake fan, and it also is possible to mount the fan beside our motherboard, and this cutout is to provide our flow for it. To remove this panel, we can simply pop it out from the top, and then lift it up and away. And if we take a look at the back of the panel we've just removed, you'll notice we've got a magnetically attached dust filter over those two large perforations. On the top of the case we've got a power button and four buttons to control the case's built-in ARGB controller. So just before we remove our top panel, there is this section of the top panel that's removed individually. It's magnetically attached at this end, so you can simply just get your finger in here, lift it up and remove it. So you might be wondering why this is needed. But if we take a look in through this cutout, you can see our motherboard's I.O. is going to be at the top of the case and this is going to give us access to all the ports on the motherboard without removing the full part of the top panel. To remove our top panel, we're going to have to remove this little button along from the lock to the unlock position. And then we're going to be able to pull our top panel backwards, lift it up to remove it from the case. If we take a look at the back of the panel we've just removed, you'll notice there's no additional dust filters behind it and supped are going to be just mesh on the top. So taking a look in from the top of the case, we've got our motherboard's I.O. is going to be installed here. We've got seven PCI expansion slot brackets, so your graphics card is going to plug directly into the motherboard and be hanging down from it. We've got this large cutout here, which is going to be useful if you want to install a radiator at the rear. You've got this extra space to bring it up into. And at the top of the case, you are actually able to mount three 120 millimeter fans. So you can see what it's going to look like with three 120 millimeter fans installed at the top. My only concern would be these are going to partially block your graphics card IO, so there is potential for cables to come out the graphics card and be pushed into these fans where they're going to obstruct the fan blades. So we take a look at our RGB controller at the top, we've got two RGB cables plugging in, one from our lighting bar and one from our bottom fans, so there's no additional ports to plug any additional devices into. So orientating you in the case, our motherboard is going to be installed here on its side, so the IO is going to be at the top. In terms of motherboard support, the case supports motherboards up to ATX in size, you can see we do have additional cutouts, so it does support back connector motherboards. And if you want to go with a CPR cutter, the maximum height supported is up to 170 millimeters. And to help hide the cables at the bottom of our motherboard, we've got this panel here. It is removable. You just need to pull it towards us, lift it up to remove it. So your graphics card is going to plug directly into your motherboard. And because the motherboard is on its side, we've got our expansion slot brackets here at the top. Meaning your graphics card is going to plug directly into the motherboard, hanging down from the top here vertically. And in terms of graphics card support, the maximum length supported is up to 370 millimeters. We do have this little support bracket down at the bottom to help provide some support for when we vertically mounted graphics card, and there is additional slots we can move it down to. So I have a pretty big graphics card, so I'm gonna move this down to the bottom slot. You can see our IO is down at the bottom of the case where we've got a single type C port, two USB type A ports, and a combined headphone and microphone jack. And you can see we've got this nice ARGB lighting bar on the front of the case. You can see on the bottom of the case, SUPT have installed three 120mm PWM ARGB fans, and these are reverse blade fans, so they're going to be drawing cool air in from the bottom of the case. The fans are on a removable bracket. To free it up, there's one screw at the bottom, which you're going to need to remove, and then you're going to be able to slide the fans towards the front of the case to free the bracket up, and then you're going to simply be able to lift it up to remove it. Now, obviously, to fully remove it from the case, I would need to free up our fan cables, and because I'm happy with the fans in the bottom, I'm not going to do this. Alternately, at the bottom, you are able to mount up to a 360mm radiator. You can see in the bottom of the case, we've got a dust filter, which can be filled out from the front for cleaning. We've got another removable fan stroke radiator bracket on the rear of the case, and on this, you are able to mount up to three 120mm fans or up to a 360mm radiator. To free the bracket up, we've got a screw on the side we're going to need to remove. And then to free our bracket up, we need to pull it out from the bottom. We can slide it down and then remove it from the case. So you'll see on the bracket there is two different height options for installing it. So that's the bracket in its default position, but if we actually want to install it further up, we can just move it up a slot, push it in, and then secure it at the bottom. 
And you can see we've got a magnetically attached dust filter behind our rear fan bracket. Our final fan mounting slot is behind our motherboard where we are able to fit a 120 millimeter fan. If you don't want to install fans in this bracket, it is possible to mount either two three and a half inch drives or two two and a half inch drives. And this bracket is removable. There's a captive thumb screw over towards the left hand side and then you can tilt the bracket out to remove it. We've got another drive bracket down at the bottom of the case and on it you are going to be able to mount two two and a half inch drives or a single three and a half inch drive. Again, this bracket is removable. We've got a captive thumb screw at the top which we need to loosen. Then we can lift the bracket up and away. Behind it we've got our case accessory box and in here we've got all the screws we're going to need for the build individually labelled and we've also got some cable ties. You can see cable management looks like it should be quite good. We've got plenty of Velcro cable straps throughout the case to help organise our cables and our power supply is going to go down here at the bottom and the case is compatible with full sized ATX power supplies up to a maximum length of 190 millimetres. So moving to the rear of the case you can see where our power supply is going to be installed and above it we've got this removable panel. It is magnetically attached at the top and then we can simply lift it up and away. And you might be wondering why we've got this panel. If I put it back into place, you'll see we've got a cutout at the top and a cutout at the bottom. And the reason this is here is to pass cables through. Because your motherboard's I.O. is going to be enclosed in the top of the case, you need some way to get your cables to be rooted out. So we've got this gap at the top and a gap at the bottom to pass cables out the back of the case. Okay, so say you don't want to have this case sitting on the left hand side of the desk. It is actually possible to rotate the case round. So this is now going to be the front of the case and if you have it sitting on the right hand side of the desk, you're going to be able to look in and see your build. There is a few adjustments we're going to have to do to the case. So the first thing is we're going to have to remove our feet. They're each held on with a screw. Now you'll notice this larger foot is still secured and that is because our I.O. cables are still attached to it. So we're going to have to free them up. So I'm just temporarily going to lift our bottom fans up and out of the way. We've got a few cable ties to cut and then we can pull our I.O. cables through. Then we need to move the feet to this panel here. I've gone ahead and set a power supply into the case to show you the one additional step we are going to have to take. So in this orientation, this is going to be the bottom. And if we were to plug a standard power supply cable into here, you can see that this is going to stick out much further than these feet. I'll just show you what it would look like. So there's no way the case is going to go down with this in place. So that's the reason we get this cable extension for our power supply. So we can go ahead and plug it into place. And then we temporarily remove this panel we can pass the cable in through here and then we can replace our panel. So we take out the back of the case, you can see we've now got this little cutout here, so we can just need to pop it out. So we can line the other end of our cable extension up and there's two loose screws in the case accessory box we can secure it into place with. So I've put the panels back on to give you an idea of what the case is going to look like in this orientation. So again, looking in on the PC mounted on the right hand side of the desk, you're going to be able to see your full build. So this is what your front panel is going to look like, definitely not as attractive as the tempered glass on the other orientation. You can see we're going to have tempered glass on the side of the top where we can see our ARGB lighting bar. So you can see in this orientation your motherboard is going to be installed upside down. Um, so our graphics card is going to be installed with our PC expansion slots here horizontally but also upside down. And I've got my answer about why there's no additional screw holes for that fourth foot. The reason is you can see our power supply extension cable, the case is actually resting down on it over that side. So it's nice that Subtle have given you two different configuration options where you can have this PC on either side of your desk. In terms of a front panel, I don't think this is particularly attractive and the tempered glass is going to look much better. So I'm going to put the case back to a stock configuration and then we'll get on with the build. To open our CPU socket, we need to push this lever down and out, bring it all the way to the middle of the motherboard and then we're going to be able to open the socket cover up. We can then lower our CPU carefully down into the socket, making sure we've got the text the correct way up. We'll line it up with the notches, wiggle it from side to side to check it's correctly in the socket then go ahead and close the socket cover down again. As we close the lever back down, the black bit of plastic should pop off and then we'll put it in our motherboard box for safekeeping. To install our M.2 SSD, we're going to need to remove the heatsink. It's held on with two screws. We can then insert our drive into the slot and I'll be flattening it down. The clip is going to hold it in place. We need to remove the plastic protection from the back of our heatsink and then we can replace the heatsink. We're going to be installing the RAM in the second and fourth slot along from our CPU, so we'll open the clips on these slots. Then we can line the RAM up with the slot, and once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure, and it's going to clip into place. 
We're going to need to remove the stock AMD clips to install the bracket for our CPU cooler. And then we've just got a thumb screw to put onto each corner. We can then set the motherboard into the case, line it up with the standoffs at the back. And once we get it through the middle standoff, it's going to help hold the motherboard in place. So next we've got our case cables to plug in. Our HD audio cable is going to go into this header here. So we'll bring our cable through the cutout and we're going to plug it in with the HD audio text facing up the way. Next to it, we've got some system fan headers. So we'll bring the PWM cable coming from our bottom fans through, line it up with the header and push into place. We've then got two ARGB headers. So we'll bring the ARGB cable coming from our controller through and get it plugged in. Front panel connectors are going to go into this header here. So we'll bring the cable through the cutout and we're going to plug it in with the front panel text facing up the way. We've got our USB 3.2 Gen 1 header here. So we'll bring the cable through from the bottom, line it up and push into place. And then we'll just pull the excess cable through to the back. And next to that, we've got our front panel type C header. So we'll bring the cable through, line it up and push into place. And again, pull all our excess cable through to the back. I've gone ahead and plugged the cables into our power supply that we're going to need. So I've plugged a 24 pin motherboard cable, two 8 pin EPS cables to provide additional power to your CPU. I plugged in a SATA power cable to power our case's ARGB hub, and I've also plugged in a 12 volt high power cable to power our graphics card. We can then set our power supply into the case with the fan facing out the way, and we'll secure the power supply into place with the included grooves in the case accessory box. Our 24 pin cable is going to go into this header down at the bottom of the motherboard, so we can go ahead and bring the cable through the cutout. We'll line it up with the motherboard and push into place. And then we can pull all the excess cable through to the back. Our two 8 pin EPS cables are going to go into these headers here. So we can bring our cables through the cutout, line them up, and get them plugged in. Then at the back of the case, we need to plug the SATA cable coming from our ARGB controller into the SATA cable coming from our power supply. We're now ready to start working our I.O. and it's great to see that our fans are pre-installed in the radiator, so one less thing to do. So what we need to do is plug the cable in for our fans, and there's one cable to go into all three fans. So at the end of this cable, we've got one four-pin PWM cable to go into our CPU fan header, and a three pin five volt ARGB cable. And we're gonna plug that into a splitter cable coming from our pump. So we can take a look at the cables coming from our pump. So we've got a three pin five volt ARGB cable. We plug that into a header on our motherboard. We've got this additional splitter cable where we can plug the cable coming from our fans into. We've got this three pin fan connector and we plug this into our pump header on the motherboard. It's gonna allow us to power the pump and also adjust its speed. We've also got this USB cable and we're gonna plug that into a USB 2.0 header on our motherboard and that's gonna allow our software to control the display on the pump. Next thing to do is install the brackets to your pump which we're gonna to use to attach it to the motherboard. Just need to be careful with the thermal paste that's pre-applied so we can remove the plastic protection and then we just need to attach the brackets to the pump and we use these small screws to secure them into place. And then we can set our fan bracket onto the radiator and we'll secure it into place using the short radiator screws. Just before we set our I.O. into the case, I'm just going to feed the cables coming from it through to the back. Then we can set it up into place. And we'll secure it into place on the side with the screw we removed at the start. Next we can set our pump up onto the motherboard and we'll get a thumb screw onto each corner. And then we just need to tighten each corner up in turn. And then I'm going to route all the cables coming from our pump through to the back. Next we need to get our cables plugged in. So we've got our pump header to go into this header here. So we'll bring it back through and get it plugged in. Our CPU fan header is this header here. So we'll take the cable coming from the fans in the radiator through and get it plugged in. We can take the ARGB cable coming from our pump, remove the plastic protection from the additional connector, and then we'll daisy chain in the ARGB connector coming from the fans on the radiator. We've got an ARGB header down here, so we can bring our cable through and get it plugged in. And we've got two USB 2.0 headers down the bottom of the motherboard. So we'll plug the USB cable coming from the pump into one of those. We can then slide our cable cover bracket back into place. And we can remove the plastic protection from our pump. You might wonder why I've installed our pump in this orientation. I've looked at other people's reviews and they say that the display on the pump isn't rotatable. And actually you do need to have your tubes installed towards the bottom to have the pump the right way up. So that's the reason I've installed the brackets on the pump in this particular orientation for this build. We're now ready to install our graphics card, so we're going to need to remove the second and third expansion slot bracket from the top. So you are able to fit a screwdriver in through here, which is going to let you remove the brackets. We can then line our graphics card up with the slot. And once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure to the graphics card, and it's going to clip into place. And then we'll secure it into place with the two screws we've just removed. Then we can slide the little bracket at the bottom up to where it supports our graphics card, and tighten up the thumb screw.
Then we can bring our 12 volt type power cable through the cutout and get it plugged into the graphics card. Then we just need to do some cable management to get the panels back on again. Okay, so that's the PC up and running and looking absolutely amazing. And in fact, I think it looks that good. I almost wish I had my PC on the left hand side of the desk. Now, in terms of setting the PC up, it is fairly straightforward. I've made another video that covers all of that, and I'll put a link to that video in the description. The only thing that video won't show you how to do is to set up the Deepcool AIO, but really installation is very simple. You head over to their website, the link is in the description, download the software. And when you open it up, your CPU information is going to come up on the I.O. There isn't really any customization options in the software. Really, the only thing you can do is turn off the trailing zeros. So what I'm going to do now is some thermal testing, and then I'm going to be back with a case review. So you want to hear what I think about this case, you're going to want to check out that video, and I'll put a link to it in the description. If you have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.